In this lesson, we are going to review finding area and perimeter of shapes. As a quick review, area is the inside of a shape, and perimeter would be around the outside of a shape. And then a note to make for triangles, because triangles can be a little bit tricky. Part of the formula for area of a triangle is to use the height of the triangle. And we need to make sure we understand that the height must be perpendicular to the base. And a triangle can be turned any direction we need to turn a triangle, and whatever side you want can be the base. You just have to make sure that whatever you're using for the base is perpendicular to whatever you're using for the height. And perpendicular means it's going to connect at a 90 degree angle or a right angle. So you're going to see this symbol in the corner. All right, so area of a square or rectangle, because a square is a type of rectangle, is just multiplying the length times width. To find area of a triangle, we have one half, and then you multiply the base times the height, and we just talked about base and height of a triangle have to be perpendicular. And then the perimeter formulas are essentially we're just adding up all the way around the shape is the formula for perimeter. Starting with number one, we know it's a square, shows us it because all sides are the same. So we find the area. Area, you take length times width. In this case, the length is 7, the width is 7. So that's going to give us 49. And to find the perimeter, I'm just going to add up all around. So 7 plus another 7 plus another 7 plus another 7. And that's going to give us 28 all the way around. Technically, that's 28 millimeters. In area, this would be 49 millimeters squared. Because when we're doing area, it's always going to be in units squared. Because we're multiplying a unit times a unit, which is what squared is. Number two. For area is length times width, so that's going to be 14 times 6, and that is going to be 84, and that would be 84 feet, because this time our unit is in feet, and to find the perimeter. Now it doesn't give us all four sides, but we know some things about a rectangle. I know that if this side is 14, then this side has to be 14. I know this side is 6, this side has to be 6. That's what makes it a rectangle, is that the opposite sides are the same, or that's called congruent in geometry. So then I have to add up all the way around. The 14, and another 14, and a 6, and a 6. And it doesn't really make a difference what order you add those in. But we want to make sure we're adding all the way around. When we add those together, we get... 40. Oh, I'm sorry. And I forgot. For area, that was feet squared. And then for perimeter, then it's just regular feet. Because again, area should always be in units squared. Okay, number three is a little bit different. Because it's um, a composite shape, it means it's made up of more than one shape put together. So we need to maybe draw an imaginary line here. We just separate this into two rectangles. I can do that in a couple different ways. One, I can see, well, what if I cut it right here? And this is rectangle one, and this is rectangle two. Or I could, I also see, what if I draw a line here? And this is rectangle one, and this is rectangle two. It doesn't make a difference which way we want to do this. Either way, we've got this side up here that we don't know what it is. We're going to have to figure that out first. So we'll have to use some other numbers. Well, I know that from this side all the way across to this side, it tells me is 25 centimeters. I want to look at this side down here because we're trying to find another one that 
goes across that same direction. This one up here that we're missing. Another one that goes across there is this one. From here across to here is 19 centimeters. So if we put those together, if I know from here to here is 19, if I go a little bit further, that's 25. So if this whole thing is 25, we take away the 19, that's this part. So 25 minus the 19 gives us 6. That means that this missing piece up here must be 6. And we can check because it's 19 this far, and then 6 more will be 25, and that gives us a distance all the way across. So now that we've got our missing side, to clear off some of this here, I'm going to leave my imaginary line in there, and that was triangle one. Oh, sorry, that was rectangle one, that was rectangle two. So if I want to find the area of rectangle one, the length is five, and the width is 19. So I need to do 5 times 19. Let's get rid of my number 1. And that will be 95. So this rectangle 1 is 95 centimeters. And then to find our second rectangle here, this is 6 by 18. So we're taking 6 times 18, and that is 108. So now I've got this one is 95, and this one is 108. And these two figures put together, these two rectangles put together, make this whole shape. So I would add those together, and that gives me a total area of 203. This is in centimeters. And again, area is always going to be units squared, so centimeters squared. Now to find the perimeter, we just add all the way around. So we've got 5, 19, and we're just going to go all the way around this whole shape. And then we've got 13, and then we've got our 6 that we found. We've got 18 down this side, and we've got 25 across the bottom. So I think we got all the sides all the way around. Oops, I forgot to write them here. So we did 5, 19, 13, 6, 18, and 25. So all of them all the way around, and that should give us 86, and this is in centimeters. So our perimeter, once I add all the way around that figure, will be 86 centimeters. Number four, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, if I look closely, and first look, it says x is 2 and y is 8, which doesn't make much sense. Now, not all figures are drawn to scale, but the shorter side is 8 and the longer side is 2 doesn't really make sense. But if we look closely, it says 2 feet and eight inches, or they're not even in the same unit. So we have to first always make sure we're dealing with side lengths in the same unit. So it's easiest in this case, I think, to put them both in inches. So this is eight inches. And then for the feet, there's 12 inches make up one foot. So we take two feet times 12 inches each. So that's the same as 24 inches. So this is now not two, but 24 inches. Now this one makes more sense. And now that we have the right measurements, we can go ahead and do our calculations. So for area, we need length, 24, times width of 8. And that gives us an area of 192. This is in inches, so it's inches squared. And then to find the perimeter, again, we just add all the way around. So then this would also be 24, and this would also be 8. And I'm not going to write all that down, but I'm just going to add up the 24 plus 24 plus 8 plus 8, and that gives us 64, and again, this is in inches.
Watch your units in area should be units squared in perimeter should just be regular units. Okay. For the triangles numbers five, six and seven, we're going to use a triangle formula. So that's you take it's easiest to do the base times height first. So go ahead and do base times height because multiplying by one half is really the same thing as dividing by two. You can do whatever you find easiest. I find multiplying base times height first and then dividing that answer by two to be the easiest for me. And we said base and height of a triangle have to be perpendicular. That way we know what numbers we're looking at. So in number five, we only have two numbers here. And we can see that these do come together at a 90 degree angle. It doesn't show the symbol, but it, they are, they're 90 degrees. So I'm going to do one half times then base is 11 and height of that triangle is 10. So for me and my calculator, I'm going to do the 11 times 10 first. And that's going to be 110. And then I can either take one half times 110 or I can take 110 divided by 2. It's the same thing and we get 55 and this is in centimeters. And again, area is in centimeters squared. For number six, we said the base and the height has to be perpendicular. So let's say that the base is the 18. What number, 9, 7, or 13, is perpendicular to the 18? And it's the 7. This would make that nice 90 degree angle. So then the 7 must be the height of this triangle. So we want area equals 1 half times the base is 18, times the height is 7. So I'm going to start with 18 times 7. And you can put this all in your calculator at the same time. And that's going to give me 126. I'm going to divide that by 2 to do my 1 half. And that's 63, and this one is in inches. So 63 inches. Number 7 looks a little bit weird because we have the triangle here, yet this 10 is on the outside of the triangle. What height means how tall is a triangle? Well, the triangle is from here, the bottom, and here is the tallest part of the triangle. So the 10 just tells us we have to go straight down. That's why the height has to be perpendicular. So like in number 6, here's the tallest part down to the base. In number 5, the tallest part down to the base. Those happen to go through the triangle. In number seven, that just happens to be outside the triangle. Again, we want to go from the tallest part down to the base. And it's telling us that that height is 10. The base is still 14. The base of the triangle is over here. And it will still form that 90 degree angles. So for this area, it's 1 half, base is 14, height is 10. 14 times 10 is 140, times 1 half or divide by 2, and we get 70, and this one is in meters. So just be careful with triangles that you're using the right numbers for the base and the height. Always look for that right angle. Where is it 90 degrees? That tells you which one is the base and the height.